On April 14, 2013, Frederick Pierucci's life was forever changed. He was an executive of Alstom, a French power and transportation conglomerate with a happy family and promising future. On that day, he was arrested by the FBI when his plane landed at the John F. Kennedy International Airport for his alleged role in a 2003 to 2004 corruption case involving Alstom in Indonesia. Five years later, on December 1, 2018, Meng Wanzhou, CFO of Huawei, China's telecom giant, was arrested in Vancouver at the request of the US on the charge of conspiracy to defraud multiple international institutions. Later, both of them found their arrests are at the heart of a pot where America's judicial power seemed to be intertwined with the business world. Et euh, ils m'ont arrêté euh, pour faire pression sur le PDG euh, d'Alstom. Euh, la menace était que, ne, là, si, comme j'avais été arrêté et que j'étais proche de lui, il savait très bien que euh, la prochaine étape, c'était de l'arrêter lui-même. En m'arrêtant, euh, ils ont mis la pression sur lui pour, co pour qu'il coopère, et donc pour qu'il euh, accepte de payer une amende qui à l'époque était la plus grosse amende euh, au titre de cette loi payée au département de justice, donc plus de 700 millions de, de dollars. Et euh, ils ont mis la pression sur lui aussi pour qu'il vende euh, 70% de l'entreprise au grand concurrent américain d'Alstom qui était de General Electric. Once a symbol of France's industrial power, Alstom was dismembered by the Americans. The Foreign Corrupt Practice Act was born 1977 as a domestic law to restrict American companies' corrupt practices. But later, the US government found this put US enterprises in a disadvantaged position in overseas competition. Huge efforts were made to make this law international. Any company that has minimal contact with the US comes under the law. This can include using US dollars in contracts and sending an email via an American server. But it looks like the act targets more European companies than American ones. Since it came into effect, of all the 29 companies who paid a penalty of more than $100 million, based on the act, 15 are from Europe, with only six from the US. I think the U.S. has weaponized American dollar together with the international payment system known as the SWIFT system. Therefore, uh, any company in the world, if, if it is doing business using U.S. dollars, actually, it is under the supervision of the American authority. Countries need to fight corrupt practices. But the asymmetry of the way U.S. treats its own companies and foreign ones raises a valid question. How willing is the U.S. to employ its law as a weapon to achieve its political and economic goals? With Washington's global spy network, how many more companies will fall prey to the American trap? The answers to these questions are even more clear in the case of Huawei. The arrest of Meng was woven into a larger plan to crack down on Huawei a world leader in 5G technology. The Trump administration is cracking down on Chinese telecom giant Huawei. Now this effectively is banning it from doing business with American companies. Companies will now be banned uh, from providing Huawei with chips made using American parts or American design unless they receive special permission from the Commerce Department. The weapon the US used this time is its export control regulations. Apparently, if America decides to impose sanctions on Iran, it would not like any other country to do business with the country. Otherwise, it would face secondary sanctions from the U.S. The secondary sanction, I think, violates international law. First, it does not have any basis on the jurisdiction of international law. For example, for example it does not have support by the, either the uh, territorial ju jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. And more importantly, it violates the international rule of non-intervention. The rule or the principle of non-intervention is a very important international principle, which is enshrined by UN Charter, according to which every country has a right to conduct affairs 
without the external interference. The US tried to portray Meng's arrest as a pure legal case, but it was not from the start. According to a report revealed by Canada's spy agency, advanced communication to the Canadian Security Intelligence Service regarding her arrest came from the FBI. Meng's arrest and the issue of Huawei has been quickly used as leverage by the Trump administration in a tit-for-tat trade war that has lasted more than two years. By choking Huawei, the US government is weakening Huawei's 5G dominance while making more demands in a China-US trade deal. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has tried many times to unite different countries to join the Huawei ban frontline, claiming Huawei equipment could be used for espionage by the Chinese government. As always, no evidence has ever been offered. There are a lot of evidence to show that the United States is using law to uh, safeguard its foreign policies and national interests. Nowadays, the uh, U.S. Uh, regard China as a competitor uh, or a challenger to U.S. interests. Therefore, it used uh, its long-arm jurisdiction to uh, penalize or to uh, prevent the development of uh, Huawei, which is a high-tech uh, company uh, of China. Although uh, France is an ally of the United States, however, in order to uh, you know, realize its economic interest, the U.S. is not hesitant to use its law to, uh, you know, uh, to, to uh, impose sanctions on a French company, although France is an ally. The curtain has come down on the story of Alstom, but will Huawei become the next Alstom? Alors j'espère euh, très sincèrement que sur Huawei, ça, euh, ça finira pas comme, euh, comme, euh, comme le cas d'Alstom. Euh, je pense que euh, la grosse différence, c'est que, euh, d'après ce que je vois, mais je ne suis pas dans, dans le secret des dieux, mais euh, au moins vous avez, euh, Huawei peut compter sur le support du gouvernement euh, chinois.